Hey, good to see you guys. Glad you're still meeting. Way to go. I uh, think about this study, and one of the things that I love about um, a good Bible study whenever you're, you're building in a text is you can see the points that you've discovered continue to have momentum and energy. And so thinking about everything we've talked about so far, that attitude is a frame of mind that shapes and affects our disposition in life and the relationships around us. That's what attitude is. So as we're all kind of learning to say, God help me with my attitude, part of what does that is the impact of the gospel. We looked at that last week. When the gospel is in us and moving through us, it's the difference maker. I'm seeing life from through the lens of the gospel. So as we talk about the benefits of a Christ-like attitude in today's study, we're gonna see several things that just reinforce everything we've seen so far. So we pick up our text in verse 12. Paul says, now I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. Pause for a moment. What's he talking about? He's talking about his imprisonment. I love this text because this whole second half of the first chapter is all about Paul going through suffering. And in the midst of it, he uses that phronio word and he uses that kara word. He talks about setting our mind on the right kind of things. He talks about the power of the gospel. Um, he talks about rejoicing. And so all that is woven into his content in this latter half of chapter two. As we think about the benefits of the gospel, part of what we wanna recognize is that those benefits are coming right out of Paul's disclosure of his own life. He's saying that what's happened to me has served to advance the gospel. That's a benefit of a good attitude. You see, what was advancing the gospel was Paul's attitude in that situation, therefore the gospel was pro prospering. Your attitude advances or takes away from the advance of the gospel. It's a benefit of the right attitude. As he goes through, I, I make five observations about ways that there are benefits to the gospel. But the third benefit is the one I want you to kind of focus on in your small group time. I mean, there's a lot of content this week. And if you had to pick and choose, I'd want you to pick the third benefit. The gospel inspires courage in the followers of Christ. An attitude, a Christ-like attitude, inspires us to be courageous. That's exactly what Paul's attitude was doing. It was inspiring the believers to be courageous. Verse 27, some authors say it's the key verse for the entire book. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Think about that. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves. Sounds attitudinal, doesn't it? In a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. He goes on to say, then whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I know that you stand firm as one man, contending as one man for the faith and the gospel. That's that for Neil word. You're, you're coming together as one guy, one man. It creates this sense of unity. But what I like about this third aspect about courage, three ways to kind of develop a courageous spirit. One is this ability to uh, have faith in the midst of opposition. Paul says, I eagerly, ex eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed. What's he saying? He's saying, I have this confidence about your stance before God and your going through suffering and my going through suffering, but I'm not gonna disappoint him. That's seeing opposition through faith. That's how you change your attitude. That the difficulties of life, I'm gonna see them from a faith perspective. God's, not, his hands aren't tied because I'm going through a difficulty. The second one is that I begin to see from an eternal perspective. And that eternal perspective is exactly what Paul says in verse 21 where he says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I'm to go on living the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I'm torn between the two. I desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is better by far, but it's more necessary for you that I remain. <laughs> That's awesome. He's saying that I don't see life from an earthly perspective. 
I see it from an eternal perspective. And when you do that, it changes your attitude. Take some time. Focus on these points around developing courage because that's what I want for you. I want your attitude to be one that's growing in its courage to believe God can work in the worst of times to do the best of things. To believe that life here has purpose and meaning, but we see it from an eternal perspective. And when we get to be with Jesus, it's gonna be better by far. But right now, you've got work to do and so do I. And that work is about choosing our attitude in any given situation so it honors Him. Have a great study. Look forward to seeing you this weekend.